Hey guys, I wanted to start this one off on a bit of a personal note. There are officially over a thousand of you guys subscribed to my channel since I started posting tutorials only a couple of months ago and the support from you guys has been insane and a great motivator to keep doing what I'm doing. So thank you. <laughs> on that note, I thought it'd be fun to make some dripping gold text to celebrate the milestone. We're going to be playing around with the spline wrap, diving into some of the sculpting tools using the pose morph tag. Let's just get straight into this. All right, let's, uh, let's get straight into this guys. Now I wanted our gold dripping text to all be connected. So to do that, first up, we're gonna start off in Photoshop and I'm just gonna create a spline. I'm gonna create a spline here and this is gonna form the shape of our text. Now to make this, I'm just using the font I've downloaded here and I'm just creating a path through the center of our text here. And I'll just continue this process all the way along until I've got a complete spline. Now my path is just following the center of this text here and we'll be able to build up our shape from this a bit later on. All right, this is looking good. Let's take this over into cinema and get started. The first thing we do is just zero out our position here. This is great. We've now got that spline that we created in Photoshop inside cinema here, and we've still got all those points as you can see. So I'm just dropping in a cube here just to get a bit of a rough idea of the scale of our scene. So I'm just gonna scale up our spline here a bit. Now what we need to do here is start creating some depth in our actual spline. At the moment, it's all just on that flat plane. So what I'm gonna do is just grab a few points and just start repositioning them to create a more interesting shape and create some interweaving here. What we wanna try and do is stop these from intersecting and create a nice organic shape. So as you can see, I'm just working along the spline, pulling them along that Z axis to create some more depth here. I'm just gonna continue this process all the way along the spline, repositioning them, rotating them, creating that depth, and the one thing to remember is to try and avoid that intersecting, as this spline is actually forming the shape of the letters we're gonna be creating. Okay, now that you guys have got a bit of an idea of what we're trying to achieve with this spline, I'm gonna power through it and jump back with you guys in just a sec. All right, this is great. We've already got that nice spline set up. We've got some nice depth here, and this is starting to look really good. That's so what we need to do now, is start creating the actual geometry that we're gonna see. So we're gonna achieve this quite simply. I'm gonna grab ourselves here a capsule, and what I'm gonna do is drop it underneath this null, and you can see in this hierarchy here, I've got a spline wrap. And that spline wrap is now telling our capsule to wrap around that thousand spline that we made earlier. You can see here, I just need to change the orientation of our capsule here. So I'll make that plus X, and you can see that's now wrapping nicely around that spline. You can see we just need to, we just need to increase our height here. So you can see I'm just dragging that along and it starts growing along that spline for us. Nice, that's looking good. And what I'll do is just increase our height segments as well here, and that's just gonna start smoothing out our geometry here. Nice, this is a good base here for us to start working with. I'm just looking at this spline and I'm thinking I'd rather my S to wrap a little bit differently here. So you can see I'm just going back in and adjusting that spline, pulling those points into different directions just to create, just so I can get that S coming forward a bit more for us. So you can see how easy this is. If we don't quite like our shape, we can jump back in and start having a play with it and start repositioning those points. I'm just gonna turn that spline wrap back on for us. And yeah, that's, look, that's looking nice. That S is looking better to me. I'm happier with this. This is, starting to take, this is starting to take shape for us here. So now that we've got this set up, I think what we need to do now is start creating those drips that we saw in that beginning animation. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna open up a new scene here and just show you how simply these drips are made. And then we'll just apply this one technique onto our geometry that we've already made. So I'm just making a cube here and giving us a few extra segments. I'm gonna hit C to make it editable, 
grab this middle plane on the base here, hit D for extrude and just pull it down. I might scale that down a little bit, hit D again, pull it down again, hit D once more for extrude, pull that down, hit T for scale, scale that out a little bit. And then finally I'll give this one extra e extrude and I'll scale that down a little bit. Now just with those few simple extrudes, we've now created this little shape here. I'm going to drop that into a subdivision surface. And you can see what's happened. It's taken that geometry, subdivided it, given us some smooth subdivisions here, and it's created this nice organic drip out of the base for us. With my edge mode selected here, I'm just hitting UL for that loop selection and grabbing these ring selections here and I'm just and I'm just repositioning them, pulling them, pulling them down, scaling them a little bit, creating a nice shape here for my drip. So I'll just do the same technique on our corner here. But this time, instead of just extruding, I'm hitting DI, giving ourselves a little inner extrude, and then extruding that out the same way we did our drip from the center there. And you can see this is one thing to be careful of. Sometimes when our geometry is facing off into different directions, when you just extrude it, it will go off into the direction the geometry is facing. So what I like to do is just extrude this a little bit, reposition our axis here, and then I'll just and then I'll just pull that down and get that into a position I'm happy with. And nice, this second drip starting to look good for us as well. So you can see how quickly we can create a couple of drips based off some really simple low geometry shapes. So you can see that we've, been, we've now got this nice shape here and all that was was a couple of extrudes, scale them down, pop them in that subdivision surface and we're looking good here. So the first thing you might notice is our mesh here is far too dense, so we need to lower this for us. We kept it nice and high so it looked good for us while we were building it. What I'm going to do now is dive in here and in my capsule I'm just going to start decreasing our height segments here. Now the trick here, we want our height and rotation segments to look fairly even. We want them to, we want them to create a nice even shape here. And you can see now when I drop that low poly capsule into a subdivision surface, we get our nice high mesh that we were looking at before. And now that we've got this low poly mesh, we can start creating those drips the same way we just did off that cube. What I'm also going to do is just decrease our cap segments a little bit as well, just so all our mesh is nice and even. So when it subdivides, we don't get it, we don't get too high of a mesh in some points. So what we need to do, you can see when I, when I make my capsule editable, it doesn't hold the position on that spline. So what we need to do is collapse our geometry here. I'm just going to drop it into a connect, hit C, and that'll now merge it, and that'll now merge it into its position. And that capsule is now maintaining that position. And now that we've got this, we can start modeling out those drips. So what I'm going to do here is just come into a shape that I think a nice drip would look good from. Grab our polygon selection here, hit D for extrude. And I'm just going to extrude this shape out a little bit. And what I'm going to do is rotate that polygon just as best to my eye so it's flat with the ground. Hit D for extrude again and I'm just going to rotate that one a little bit as well. I don't want to be too particular with how these are facing, but it just helps with our drip shape. Hitting D for extrude again, pulling that down a little bit and I'll scale that one out. And you can see we're just following that same technique that we did with that cube. So now that we've got this little shape, let's drop our geometry into a subdivision surface and let's have a look at how this drip's starting to form. So it's starting to look all right, but you can see there's, a, there's far more we can do with this. So let's grab our loop selection here, grab that edge mode. Let's grab these here, scale them out a little bit. And what I want to try and do is create a more round shape with our drips here. So you can see I'm just scaling them along Z and then scale in a little bit on X and that's starting to form that nice round shape for us. So I'm just working along the loops here of that drip, moving them along a little bit, scaling them down, 
creating a nice organic shape here. Now what I really want is this to really inflate at the bottom here. I want it to look nice and heavy. So I'm just grabbing this selection, scaling that out, creating a nice big drip right at the base there for us. And there we go, this is starting to look good. And there we go, we've made our first drip based on this really low mesh. And that's looking good. Now what we need to do is just keep repeating that step, working our way along the geometry here. So you can see I'm just doing the same thing again, hitting D for extrude, extruding it out a little bit and then just rotating it so our plane is facing more towards the ground. And what we can do is toggle on and off our subdivision surface here, because sometimes it's easier to work to see how it's gonna look in its final form, but then sometimes that low poly mesh is just a bit easier to reposition. So jumping back into our loop selection here, scaling down those ring points, scaling down those points on X, but it's also scaling them up a little bit on Z, just to create that nice rounding shape here. Again, making that nice heavy base here for us, a nice big drip for us. Now what I'm thinking is we just want a little bit more geometry at the base here. So I'm just hitting KL on our edge mode here and just creating a nice ring cut there just to give us a bit of extra geometry. You see, I'm just having a bit of trouble here and it's because we've got the, our axis mode selected. So we'll just turn that off and you see now when I scale this, we're back to our normal state. So I'm just gonna scale this down a little bit and this is gonna help enhance the drip at the base there. You can see that UL shortcut's gonna quickly, be, quickly become your best friend because we can just grab these selections and reposition them nice and quickly. And there we go, we've now created those couple of drips really quickly based on this low mesh. So now that you've seen me do it, all we're gonna do is just keep working our way along and I'll just keep pulling back to my camera just so we can see where we wanna have a few extra drips. I'm thinking we'll make some now off our T and then we'll work our way along. So I'm just gonna keep working my way along the geometry, bouncing back and forth from my camera, just so I can see where I wanna create some more drips. So I'm just gonna power through this point and then I'll show you how we can animate these drips in the final animation. So now that we've got our drips all the way along our spline here, this is starting to look good. This is really starting to look like we've got some melting letters. So what we need to do now is make these drips start falling towards the ground. So what we need to do is collapse our subdivision surface here. I'm just gonna duplicate that and then drop that into a connect. So we've got our mesh collapsed here and we've just got one object. So what I'm gonna do now is hit Shift C and add a pose morph tag to our connect object. And what the pose morph tag does is it recognizes the position of the geometry, but then you can reposition it into different poses. And what we're gonna be doing is taking advantage of a few of the sculpting tools here. So you can see, we're just having a couple of issues because I've still got my subdivision surface turned on. So I'll just toggle that off. And now by using those sculpting brushes, just with the drag here selected, I can start, I can start dragging those drips towards the ground. So we're gonna use these sculpting tools to repose our drips. So let's go to our drip on our T here and I'll show you how it's done. Let's use this grab tool and just start grabbing our geometry and just pulling this drip down so it looks like it's, so it looks like it's dripping down, it's nice and heavy. What I might even do is jump into our inflate tool and you can see that just, you can see that just starts blowing up our geometry like a balloon. And you can see now we've got this new pose. And if I start playing with its strength here, it starts repositioning itself from that base pose to its new position. So this is looking good. So what we're gonna do is with our base pose selected, we're gonna add an additional pose. Now let's come over to our next drip here and let's just do that same technique. Let's start grabbing these drips and start pulling them towards the ground, making it look like we've got some nice melting text here. So now that we've got that repositioned a little bit, just by using the grab tool here, just to start pulling it down, we can jump back onto our pose morph tag. And again, 
and again, play with the strength of that new pose. And you can see we've got these two extra poses here. And you can see this pose morph is recognizing that new position of our geometry and animating between it. And this is really cool. So what I'm going to do is add one final pose here. Now that you've seen how we can, now that you've seen how we can add individual poses per drip here, but what I'm going to do is just add one extra pose and I'll animate all our drips into this one. So I'm just going to work my way along the geometry here in this pose tag, pulling this geometry, making our text look like it's melting here. You can see I can still play with the strength of our pose here and we're getting this nice animation. I can start to see, I can start to see how it's going to look and reposition some of our geometry as we're working just to make sure we're happy with how it's going to look. So I'm just working along this geometry, pulling those drips down, making sure I'm spinning, making sure I'm still spinning around the geometry so our drip still holds up its shape. Nice, now that we've got all these drips repositioned into that pose, it's time to start animating them. So let's jump into our animate tag here and you can see when I start playing with the strength, it starts repositioning all of those poses so all of our drips will start, all of our drips will start falling, but I can come into the individual poses as well and start playing with them to offset some of these drips if we wanted to. But we'll just play with the overall strength here and you can see we can even go beyond 100%. We can even start pulling them up before that zero point. But we're just going to stick with those parameters we've set in the geometry of our preferred state and then into that new repositioned state of those drips. So that's how we create those drips based on that really low poly mesh, get them into that subdivision surface, and then we can start repositioning those drips and animate them using the pose morph. So I hope you liked how that came together. Let's jump into the final scene and I'll show you what we ended up with here. Now just working up from the bottom here, you can see I've just lit this with the HDR Studio rig from Grasgo Gorilla. We've got our thousand here, just with a little gold texture I've made, and our pose morph tag, still with those three simple poses. Just a background object here, we've just got a nice little sweep. And you can see for the one here, we've just got some extruded text with another spline wrap, again wrapping onto that background shape that we've created here. But where the magic of this one is, is in the pose morph tag here. And you see when I hit play, the strength starts slowly building up and those drips start falling towards the ground. And this is a lot of fun. You can see those drips start organically falling towards the ground. Our text looks nice and wet, nice and drippy, nice liquidy effect here. And I hope you guys had a bit of fun. Take something away from it. I'll um, see you next time. Once again, guys, a sincere thank you for the support so far. I'm loving making these videos for you guys, and I appreciate the comments and you guys just getting involved with it as well. I'll see you again real soon. All right, cheers. Thank you for subscribing. <laughs>